All right, everybody, welcome to the Peptide Masterclass. This is session one, and this is our debut on the Peptide Masterclass for gut health. Cade, any announcements before we, we dive in? Biggest announcement, we're going to be doing this. This is our Peptide Masterclass, and this is a reoccurring class uh, every month, the second Friday of every month. Great. Awesome. All right. We'll kick it off. So uh, uh, Dan, as you know, the, the place we always start, there's this methodology we put together at Go Wellness is called the 345 method. And so this 345 method is uh, something that we, we look at every single patient. Every time you look at your own body, you can go through this, this very simple process of thinking, all right, the three is what are the tests you need? What are the treatments? And then what's what kind of learning or behavior modification do you need? And so I'm going to set the stage with this real quick and kind of uh, give everybody some context. And then what Dan's going to do is he and I will go through uh, some of the blood markers that will be critical uh, in your journey. But uh, before we jump into that, let's talk about uh, some of these principles of peptides. And then we'll share with you the three, four, five methods. So um, first of all, uh, peptides, you know, what are they and why are we even talking about it? Well, uh, peptides are bioenergetic expressions. And so they're just proteins. They're, they're sequences of amino acids and they're folded in a way that creates this, this expression that allows your DNA to have better communication from one cell to the next. So Dan, if you think of the term bioenergetic, what usually comes to mind? I'm so really like yeah, I start thinking of mitochondria or chi, right? Those are the two. Totally, yeah. So, and and if you think of mitochondria, they generate energy, right? ATP. And you think of chi, and chi is like that interface between matter and energy, like that transformation. So it's transformational energy. As we age, our software needs updates. And so I look at peptides as just a way of updating that bioenergetic expression. So pretty simple. Um, the second thing is peptides work like an orchestra. A lot of doctors use peptides as, as a singular instrument, right? They're just, they're pulling out the trumpet peptide. And then that trumpet, like... You can only blow on that thing for so long and then your the pathway is open and your body's like, well, we don't even need this. But when you bring in some other peptides, things get real magical. So did you have a peptide orchestra that you, um, a little symphony you conducted this morning in your stack? I did, you know, and that's one of my favorite things about talking with you is like, what is your current stack? But yeah, you know, and uh, this morning after my workout, I did BPC, CJC, Epimarel, and IGF-1. Um, and then my, my right now, this uh, this month, like my morning with my with my essential aminos, I was t I've was been on five amino. So I'm nice. quite, quite a stack right now. It, and it's fun. Dan and I will send each other pictures. It's almost like who's doing the most peptides at once. <laughs> it's a competition we have. <laughs> it's so amazing I, stacking them and the results that you get from the stack right? It's, 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 it's incredible. I, I find that um, when you stack them, it's like, you're not only getting like this 10 times uh, expression, but if you think about opening multiple pathways at once, because peptides are pleiotropic, meaning they're, they're not like just shutting off a singular pathway and opening up an, another one, like a, a drug would, but they really, uh, when you put them together, it's like getting a thousand times the response. And, and you notice that it's, you know, peptides can be subtle, but you start noticing this momentum that gets built up. You know, my, my stack this morning, ARA 290, I had uh, CJC 1295, Epimorelin, uh, I did Gonadarelin and uh, thymosin beta-4 and BPC-157. And it's just like, man, I've, I'm working out really hard right now. I've, I've lost about five pounds of fat in the last 30 days. And so I've been changing my exercise workout and snowboarding a lot. That helps too. And um, the peptide structure, I don't wake up sore. I feel really energized. And oh, I'm doing Selenc as well. And I feel calm and 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 uh, supercharged. And so that's the orchestra that we're going to show you in these master classes, how you can create your own orchestra every day. So the way we look at it, and there's a book called Essentialism, is think about the essential pathways that lead to a residual outcome. So it's not just 
you're taking a peptide to get a result that day, what we're looking at is a long-term result that sticks with you. And then what do you know? What have you noticed, you know, the longer you've done peptides, as you look back, what's the big difference that you found in your, your own health or even in your patient's health? I'd say, you know, it, it, from my own personal experiences, you know, it's like I started off with that single approach, you know, and it was like more of like an experimentation, like I want to see what this does. And I, I think the biggest thing I've noticed was the orchestra, you know, and then, it, you know, it kind of made sense. It was like, well, first of all, these things don't work in a closed environment by themselves in our body there that's what's naturally produced our body's not like well today it's bpc guys that's what's on the menu it's like all right in a, in a healthy state our body is pumping out these these peptides to make us healthy so my first big thing was noticing like the stacking makes a massive you know that's when i really started to feel like there was a leapfrog with how i felt in energy um you know in the last few years you and i have like like been doing all these things with um our workouts and different diet types and i'm finding like consistently um even when i can't work out or i get back and i'm hitting the gym really hard i the my muscle mass my energy levels and my recovery all of those things um have gone up and i'm i i find the, the other thing that i notice is um i can i sleep less and i wake up feeling incredibly refreshed Mm. you know okay so uh, so you you can you can get by with less sleep but you're getting higher quality sleep yeah the recovery is there right it's like it's sleep it's sleep and it's it's restful it's it's refreshing and it's regenerative and they get up and i'm like oh wow i can really keep this up it's amazing and there's a book called The Slide Edge that I'd recommend everybody read, but it's like these 1% changes every day uh, lead to a 37 times uh, result by the end of the year. And so it's the consistency that makes things really work in this. And so one of the things that gives you a residual result is when you start looking at labs in the right way. You can look at some of these core blood markers right there. And um, some of these, these are the eight core blood markers of gut health, and they're not talked about, Dan. I mean, this is, uh, for some reason, a lot of, a lot of uh, people in the medical field, they don't look at the blood and think anything of the gut, but why would, how does the blood relate to the gut in the first place? Well, I mean, massively, we have, you know, everything that we're taking in, I always, you know, the gut is that intelligent filter. So um, all this metabolic waste that's circulating in our blood is getting, you know, getting into our liver um, and then is getting excreted through the gut, a large percentage, you know, and then that absorption also. So the proteins, the all the, the, the different aspects, like all of our energy substrates and then all of these micronutrients that are necessary. And then the secondary piece of that is um, the richness of the immune system and all the microbiome. And so these, the, the postbiotics coming from the gut bacteria are influencing what's going on in our blood and all of our biochemistry and the immune system that's going on and all the activity that's going on in the gut in that way, you know, it's all reflective in the blood. It's, it's one of the quickest, most accurate windows into what's going on in the gut. I actually had this. This is no joke. Um, two weeks ago, I was having a conversation with somebody who came in for a consult, and you know they thought, well, you know, you know, I have an incredibly tight relationship with my primary care, and they said if there's any labs I need, I could just go back, and you know, I'm just like okay, I didn't want to argue with the guy, but he comes back and he says, my primary care said there's no way to measure inflammation. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay i mean i just got, i said i need you to go to google and i want you to type in blood markers for inflammation the guy got this massive list and he's <laughs> all these measure inflammation i said those are inflammation and they're measurable so i think uh you know measuring the inflammation and the oxidative stress is are getting an indication that there's oxidative stress is the biggest interference there is think of it as static in the body and then like i said if we have inflammation it's a smart function in our body to say hey if there's a threat or there's damage we need 
all resources to feed our immune response. So it shuts down typical hormone receptor sites because we have multiple receptor sites for hormones. Yeah. It shuts down the ones that that are there for normal healthy function. And that's why a lot of times someone can measure their hormones and they look normal, but yet they're still having all these hormonal driven symptoms. And it's because, or can be because of this oxidative stress or inflammatory process going on. I'd say that's number one. Yes. I couldn't agree more. And uh, Dan has done entire days on inflammation uh, in our Go Wellness events, and, and it's fascinating. So uh, there's different ways of, of looking at oxidative stress. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share uh, a functional blood chemistry panel, because maybe some of you don't have this. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so this patient is, um, you know, it, he had long COVID, it wasn't getting over the infection, lots of stress. You can see from an inflammatory uh, area, we'll, we'll give you guys some high level in, inflammatory markers. If, if your hemoglobin A1C is elevated, your glucose is elevated, your insulin, you're going to have inflammation. Anytime blood sugar drops or spikes, um, that's one of the most dangerous types of inflammation because it's damaging your arterial lining. So there's an inflammatory, you can't measure inflammation. That's like, uh, when is it time to fire your doctor? I, I, I mean, keep the relationship, but maybe you can, there's some, there's a, an ability to move on. Um, inflammatory mark, you're going to see inflammation in the kidneys. If the blood urea nitrogen is too high, uh, that can be kidney damage there. Uh, Dan mentioned the N NIN gap. I call it the anion gap, but I am from Idaho. So everything I pronounce is not to be taken seriously, <laughs> but the anion gap, um, how many of your patients do you see this particular marker elevated in? Um, I'd say 95%. Yeah. I, and I would say the same. And even people who are very healthy, fit, they eat really well. It's a very challenging marker to, to get balanced because I see it as a relationship between stress and, you know, these can be subconscious drivers, the subconscious stress. And it's also uh, the interface between digestion. So it's stressed, you know, do you have too much aldosterone secretion from your adrenal glands? Is, is your blood pressure not totally regulated? Are the electrolytes not moving? But the anion gap is also a big kind of, I look at this uh, and Dan, you know, you know, I'd love to hear your perspective, but I look at the anion gap as this is the 10 year inflammatory issues that are coming down the pipeline if we don't get this marker lower. And so even getting at one point closer to functional actually limit it, it eliminates a lot of the risk in the future for cardiovascular events. Yeah, massively. And I think, um, you know, when we're looking at, you know, what does this indicate? You know, it has to do with positive and negative ions, total antioxidant status and, What's crazy is if it's if you just think in terms of pH, you know, pH is the, the main thing that drives movement from the vascular tissue into our organ systems and then back. And so if this is off, that means systemic pH is struggling to maintain. So in these deeper tissues, because you're not going to alter, you know, overall pH within the blood, you're just having more accumulation of acids. And those are destructive, but they also interfere how all things move. And that right there, yeah, I, I, it, massive indicators of long-term issues because things can't get to where they're going. And, you know, it doesn't matter what we're throwing at somebody. If we're not taking care of the ability for things to infiltrate our tissue and give our cells what they need, we're going to have some big problems. Yeah, and this is where, you know, we have a, a mantra, you know, we say um, anything worth doing is worth doing well. and so. And we just like to fix things once and why keep fixing things over and over again. And so, uh, you know, he would have been on a handful of medications for the rest of his life and not fixed anything. And so that's the cool thing about the, the medicine that we practice is it actually helps people move towards unreasonable health where they actually are thriving in their, their next 10 years becomes their best 10 years because they've removed these interferences. We built up the deficiencies. What? micronutrients are necessary for immune regulation. So you can start to give the, the immune system a little bit of a break 
and start to support the process. I always think it's like a house on fire and you can't rebuild a house that's on fire without putting out the fire first. And <laughs> so if you don't have essential nutrients, it is impossible, impossible for your body to work the way it's supposed to efficiently without oxidative stress and inflammation. And, you know, you think of the nine essential amino acids. These, these are the, the ones that our bodies need and we can't make it internally unless you start breaking down muscle fibers, which a lot of people, they don't realize when we get deficient in these nutrients, our body starts feeding off of itself. And ideally it's feeding off fat tissue, but a lot of people like in this particular uh, individual's case, his muscle mass started to get depleted because his body was in such a catabolic state or a stressed out state. So, so yeah, the essentials are, they're, they're called essentials for a reason. Hey everybody, Reagan Archibald here. I hope you enjoyed the Go Wellness Show and maybe learned a couple things you could apply to your practice. If you're a healthcare entrepreneur who wants to work in an academic think tank with like-minded humans, who are just like you looking to provide better service, better quality of care for your patients, reach us at info at and we're happy to do a free practice analysis for you.